Welcome to Learn and Grow. Today we're sharing another example of a student who's struggling somehow with literacy or numeracy. My name is Gail Brown and I'm the literacy half and over to you Linnell. Thanks Gail, I'm Linnell Campbell and I'm the numeracy consultant here at Learn and Grow and today it's a numeracy chat. So Linnell tell us about this student who can't or doesn't want to explain their thinking. Yeah, it was, it's, it's a really interesting story and, and teachers may well relate. It's um, students, when you ask them to say, so how did you work that out? And you might get the answer, I just know, or my brain told me. Um, and that often happens even in literacy or in any test where they're doing multiple choice. Because multiple choices can be a really good guess, but you can't think aloud why that's the correct answer. Mm. Okay, so. And as we why, know. Yeah, why another answer is incorrect. Mm. How did you rule that out? And, so, yeah. and the, re the research says, certainly in maths and possibly does in literacy too, Gail, that a student really consolidates their learning and they really understand once they can explain themselves. And that underpins all of the results from peer tutoring. Mm. The peer tutor learns as much as the child being tutored. Yeah. And we as teachers also, we're continually learning from the students that we work with. Yeah. Are we not? That's exactly. I, what I know. I, I, lots of, Lots of primary teachers tell me that they've got better at primary maths than they ever were when they were at school um, because, they've had, because of the teaching process. It Correct. really consolidates their own understanding. And this is the same thing. This is a powerful amount of research. It underpins our Australian curriculum and the uh, US curriculum and the UK curriculum that it's come out of the research which I've pop at the end of these slides of how students learn yep. uh, maths and it, the, the principles of learning maths are really, you must be able to talk about it. It's justify, reason, explain. They're, they're yep. very central to working mathematically. Well, Aaron didn't like to do that because he had a picture of maths as a solitary uh, process of doing pages and pages of worksheets. He couldn't see that maths was something you talked about and he didn't like to talk about his strategies. The teacher was concerned that um, she needed to help Aaron work mathematically because it's an expectation of our curriculum. Well, we have a whole strand called thinking mathematically, don't we? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just now, and it's just underpins that yep. that to be able to do maths, you must think mathematically. It's not just a do maths. No, no. So we we needed to find out a little bit more about um, where was this coming from. It was um, classroom observations to just see did he ever talk about maths? Did he have the language of maths? Was that part of the problem? Um, talking to him about what it means to be good at maths, that being good at maths is not just being able to do algorithms. So question, Linnell, did Aaron ever put his hand up to answer a maths question? Oh, yes. yes. So he would do that? Yeah, but, yes. Yeah, okay. But not, not with, it, that would be at a procedural level. Like I know the answer to 17 plus 84 or Whatever. whatever yeah mm. but not be able to then talk through well how did you get that answer that was right. where he was struggling exactly. right right yeah um, and in talking with the parents interestingly they had the same understanding of what it means to be good at maths as Aaron did and so right. they needed to have their understanding of 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 the research explained to them and that's I found that's quite a common mm area of difficulty between home and school at the school level 
we know this research. We teach our teachers that working mathematically is so important and that justifying, reasoning, explaining is all part of what it means to be good at maths and not just finishing paper and pencil um, worksheets or textbooks quickly, which is what a lot of children think and what a lot of parents think. So and that's another yeah. link to literacy where we want children to explain how they get an answer, how they know that that's a long A sound instead of a short A sound. They need to know those rules and the procedures, the thinking that they need to do very quickly to, to read or to be numerate either. It's right. As we said, it's just such a way to consolidate your learning is yep. being able to talk about it and justify it. So these were the goals of, of helping Aaron and um, his family actually to understand what it means to be good at maths and to also assist him with the mathematical language and confidence. Yep. There, you know, there was an element of that, that he might need some more prompting to, to find the words to explain his thing thinking. So the interventions that were put in place were regular maths talks with the class where students were sharing alternative strategies and this is similar to an earlier coffee chat you might remember with Tammy where we said regular daily numeracy warm-ups with a number sense focus. Well they are an opportunity to have the students to share their strategies as a class to listen from with each other and to um, talk and actually prompting Aaron to ad agree or disagree with, you know, if, if somebody came up and shared a strategy and it was actually incorrect, um, the teacher actually taught some sentence starters to teach the students how to politely um, and confidently disagree with their peers yeah. and go, or, or to ask them, what, what did you mean when you did that? Or I, um, it's, it's it, something yeah, children struggle with sometimes because sometimes they just want to go, no, you're wrong. <laughs> and, and, and you don't really want them to say that because that's really putting that person down who's thinking aloud, which is great. Mm. But you want to say, well, did that work out the way you thought? So you want to change their language. So again, we're back to linking to literacy, which is wonderful. It's just great. Well, it's those social skills. Yep. Um, it, as you're right, if you've got a classroom climate where we don't make mistakes, which was also part of Aaron's understanding of what it means to be good at maths, being good at maths is mean you finish correctly and quickly and quietly. Um, whereas we're going, let's talk about this. Yep. You must have a classroom where it's okay to make mistakes. And it's and that we've got polite students who can talk and listen to each other. Yep. So that had to be part of the intervention the teacher had to put in place. Uh, those sentence starters were even put up on the wall, just a few to remind, and where you could prompt the yep. students to say, why don't you use, why don't you ask, you know, so-and-so who's up at the whiteboard explaining their strategy, why don't you ask them this? Yep. Um, and then also around the wall, we've got wall, uh, word walls, um, lists of maths language. Yep. All the different words for multiplication, for example, all the different words for division, all yep. the just um, helping them build out their maths language with some diagrams too, just to really prompt. And again, the teacher, that's part of the prompting. Um, right at the beginning, you could also say, is this what you did, Aaron? And I've used that with children. Is if, if they will, if they're just going to say, I don't know, you can actually propose a strategy to them. And 99 times out of 100, if it's the right strategy, they'll go, yes. But if, if it's not the strategy they used, they'll actually say no. And then you can try and prompt the... Yeah, yeah. But it's that guided practice and scaffolding that's really important. Mm. So how did that all go, Linnell? How did that... Well, initially, quite resistant. Okay. Continued with resistance for quite a long time. Um, so, yeah. So it, it, it took many months of lots of modeling from enthusiastic peers 
the peers had no problem with. They loved sharing yep. their strategies and talking. So over time of, of sort of watching this and going, actually, it's not so bad after all, is it? It's, it's you know, and so again, that classroom climate has to remain positive yep. and lots of um, encouragement from the teacher. Finally, we got some involvement. And Aaron was good at maths. Yep. All right. So this, this was an interesting one where often we share in our coffee chats about students who are actually not good at maths and needing a lot of support in quite basic skills. So that wasn't his issue. It was, yep. is, is that aspect of maths of, of talking about it. So yeah, it took a while, but we got there and he ended up with some great results and um, continued on to be a good mathematician. So this is the resources. Yep. Number Talks by Sherry Parrish. That's that there's actually a range of books you can buy. So that hyperlink just takes you to where you could buy them if you want to explore those, which give you um, some, it, 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 I'll see if I can hold it up here. We're talking a big fat yep. book and there's a number of them. And then the research I mentioned, which you can actually download. It's a PDF. Yep. It's huge. Don't print it off. No, it's and all of the work from the National Academy Press is, is freely available as PDFs. I would never buy the books when you can get something for free like that. And you don't need to print it out. You can read it on the screen. And a great example of a student who was succeeding, but who you were able to get elaborating their thinking processes. And we'll talk more about that in the coffee and cake session. Yeah, we'll give you some more. Absolutely, because... Yeah. You'll find it's quite a common difficulty, possibly more so for the very little ones, which we can share more and about. It's sometimes a difficulty for teachers to think aloud. And so mm -hmm. when teachers do think aloud, they're actually modelling what we want our students to do. Good point. With our and both literacy and numeracy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We hope that you'll join us in our Learn and Grow Literacy Numeracy group for that cake session. Yeah. So thanks for being with us. Bye.